Hi. Hi, I'm here to talk about some cool perfumes to wear for the winter and for fall. Uh, these are a little bit more ambery, leathery, spicy perfumes. Um, so let's get started. Hold on. So one of my first ones is one of my most favorite and most unusual ones. This is Bow Makers by uh, DS and Durga. So this is the box it comes in and it has a description in the back. So Bow Makers is a very unusual perfume and it's uh, inspired by uh, shops wood shops um, where they have a uh, pine where they have uh, maple shavings pine rosin uh, and all sorts of varnishes so this is my favorite because it smells like you know wood chips and wood shavings fresh uh, it smells like pine sap pine rosin it has a little bit of spice it has some cedar and has some moss so um, this is really refreshing and nostalgic. Um, it's for really good for people that loves like the smell of fresh shaved wood and varnish, which I do love. And um, it has also like, uh, of course, woody notes, but it has moss to freshen it up. It has cypress, it has um, mahogany and an outdoors accord. So this is good for both men and women. Um, I'm sure I consider this DS and Durga masterpiece actually so whenever i wear this i get very happy it brightens up my mood um it's kind of a quiet close to the skin type of perfume it doesn't blast out it's not obnoxious but it's also, also very unique so if you get a chance to try this um go, go for it because it's probably going to be a memorable experience even if you don't like wood shavings it's still cool um, and it's one of their best you know perfumes that I really like and I'm very happy to be able to get a, like a large bottle speaking of DS and Durga um, there's this other one that I also really like this one is called Mississippi Medicine and this also has like a lot of cool notes I mean, let's see uh, this is like uh, has oh, here's the box it has uh, notes of red cedar, aldehydes, frankincense distillate, cypress root, black pine, uh, cascarilla bark incense, Spanish cade, which is a kind of like a smoky and very smoky type of uh, firewood type of smell, and also a birch tar. So this is tarry and incensey and also natural smelling like like nature so i really like this because it's like herbal slightly dusty slightly uh piney and tarry at the same time it's very mysterious it's very natural it doesn't really smell like a perfume it smells like almost like if you went outside and there was like a fire like a uh, you had a like bonfire or something like that in the wilderness or something this is what it smells like so if you have someone that loves the smell of nature and smells of herbs and stuff like that you might want to give this a try i f i feel like this is a really good one as well and very unique okay okay um let's go to something that is a little bit more well feminine and this is called tuberas one capricious so this is a special one from the house of histoire de parfum histoire i think means like um, uh, stories of perfumes i believe in french so basically they package their stuff like it's a book and um so this is what it looks like Let's see it's like volume oops sorry my bad so this is volume one Capricious, um, and this has two bros in it, as you can tell. So it's like a series of three that concentrates on two bros, and this one is number one. So the top notes have saffron and bergamot and two bros. Then the middle notes is also two bros, but it has a really huge iris note. 
So that's, I generally don't like two rows, but iris I really love, and ylang ylang. But the bottom note is what's like most intriguing. You have two rows, you have dain, which is French for suede, and you also have cacao, which is like a powdery kind of a dark earthy chocolate almost like a chocolatey note, not sweet though. So basically you have like like a floral that is on the s sort of a thicker side because two rows is thick and it also has saffron which makes it a little bit like mysterious and spicy and then you also have the floral notes and iris notes to lighten it up but then in the background you have a little bit of suede and cacao to sort of all tie it together so this is a very um unusual tube rose it's like a tube rose that maybe non-tube rose lovers would like um it's quite unusual and quite nice the the bottom is kind of a little powdery and uh, dark and uh, a little bit, uh, what do you call it, S uh, slightly savory and slightly, slightly, slightly like sweet and earthy. So if you want something a little bit different, uh, why don't you give this a try? I would not say that this is probably for everybody, but all of these perfumes that I'm going to introduce, probably not for everyone. So just want it, but if you want to be a little bit more adventurous, why not give this a try? Okay, and um, now to something that is something that is very, let's see, I would say probably a little bit more uh, light is this one, Lorpheline. Uh, this is, a, I think, Orphan maybe uh, in French, and this is from the house of Serge Luton. This is one of my favorite houses because they have a really wide range of scents and they're all just kind of unusual a little bit. So this is a, a light musk and a very, very light incense um, uh, note. So usually incense is very hard, it's very like heavy and spicy, but this is only slightly, um, this is incense for people that are kind of afraid of incense, but still kind of like want to wear it. This is what you should get. This is very light. It's close to your skin and it's like a clean, musky, uh, slightly fruity, but it's like a light pear, I think. So it's not very offensive, but it's got a note of incense in there that's good for people that want something uh, nice and clean. But then the end, even though it's a little bit smoky, it's a little warm as well. So it's like a cold, warm, light, type of scent that you might want to wear for winter and fall that's a little bit mysterious but not in your face. So Lorpheline by Serge Luton. And let's give you something a little bit kind of like a cozy blanket but woody at the same time. So this is one of my favorite houses, Diptyque, and this is Tam Dao. So basically um, Tam Dao is like a famous sandalwood scent. So this is kind, I have the Eau de Toilette, which I prefer to the Eau de Parfum, which is, you know, a little bit heavier. I like Eau de Toilette because I feel like it's more delicate and I can, I can personally smell each of the notes like a little bit clearer than the Eau de Parfum. This one, as you know, as you know, sandalwood is woody, but not dry. Sandalwood has a very creamy, um, sort of like slightly even sweet, woody texture that is kind of unusual. So to me, uh, Tam Dao makes it really good and elegant, even though it's uh, woody, it's I don't believe that a woman can't wear this. It's uh, not too masculine to me. They put a lot of cedar in this to sort of thin out the creaminess of the sandalwood, because sandalwood, if it's too creamy, it just is too much. So this is like a clean, um, dare I say, like fresher, modern interpretation of a, a sandalwood. So this one to me is very classy and very nice, especially for the winter and fall. Okay, let's go from woody and spicy to something a little bit more floral. So this is something that I, I was very happy to get um, for cheap at Ross. 
and this was part of a set. Um, if you like um, orange blossom or Nero and, and neroli, then you might want to give this a chance. Reem acre. Reem is actually Reem acre is actually a, a high fashion uh, model. I believe she specializes in um, wedding dresses. So this is very apt because um, people the uh, floral note of orange blossom is actually um, associated strongly with weddings and wedding days as a perfume so she incorporates it in this so this one is a very warm ambery um, but not suffocating or not heavy sort of um, sweet uh, orange flower orange blossom um, perfume so if you want something not not too thin, not too springy, a little bit more traditional, a little bit very warm, very very uh, ambery and long lasting, then you might consider Reem Acre for yourself, for the especially in the winter. Okay, let's do let's see something a little bit unusual. Okay, let's do this one. So this one is something that I've hoarded for like 20 something years. This one I bought um, at a for really cheap somewhere like maybe at a drugstore or something. This is Gucci number no. three. And this one is like straight from the 80s, but this is discontinued and I can never find it anywhere and nobody else has it for sale either. So I've been hoarding it for a long time, um, very sparingly. Uh, this is like a really balsamic, uh, I, I, it's hard to describe, balsamic, beautiful, uh, woody floral. And it's really rich and really uh, special and unique to me. Um, and I will not ever like let this go because this one is one, one of those unique scents that I have very pleasant associations with and I especially like to wear this sprayed onto like denim pants uh, or jeans and uh, go about my day and do stuff because the heat body heat really makes this rise wonderfully and this is like so nice and elegant to me alas it's discontinued but I just wanted to show you okay let's go with something highfalutin let's do this so this is Coromandel. This is from Chanel. So the, this stuff is super expensive. So um, I had to make sure that I really liked it before I bought it. So Coromandel is inspired by Ch Coco Chanel's love of, or the Orient. So she is, in, it was inspired by a Coromandel screen. Uh, like I think a, a Chinese type of screen uh, that they used back in the day. And it, it has notes, I think of like varnish from the uh, the lacquer, I think, lacquer from the, the screen. And it is like a very, it's a heavyish oriental that is a bit indescribable. It has vetiver, I believe, and a bunch of aldehydes and floral notes and stuff, but it is oriental in nature, so it's heavier. And it's perfect for if you wanna feel like powerful and strong in the winter time. This is not for everybody, okay? This is like a boss babe type of perfume. Very uh, strong. It can even be kind of worn by a man, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's like one of those like power suit, um, power meeting, uh, strong woman type of uh, perfumes. Um, it, it's hard for me to describe. But it's kind of also it incorporates some notes of like um, <laughs> of the classic Chanel citrus and floral powderiness with a type of strong kind of a vetiver type of uh, woody notes in the and sort of uh, lacquer notes and aldehydes all mixed together. So it's both feminine and masculine at the same time. This is like a really marvelous. So if you have a chance to try it, go for it. But I wouldn't buy it blind buy it, okay? I would try it first because it's very expensive. Okay, let's see. Let's do something a little 
less known. Okay, uh, let me do something like, oh, let me do something very feminine. Okay, so uh, this is a very feminine and uh, pleasing and non-offensive non cologne, uh, perfume. Also, it's from the house of Serge Luton. It's called Nuit de Cellophane. Uh, which is like a nonsense name because basically Nui means night, night of cellophane. I'm not really sure where that comes from, but basically this is, smells kind of like a very subtle, clean uh, musk with a little bit of apricots and jasmine. So basically the jasmine is not your stinky, like, you know, you know, make you sneeze type of jasmine. It's kind of like the soft, airy, very feminine, musky uh, smells of jasmine, very delicate. And on top of that, you have a little bit of flowers, uh, apricot scent, apricot floral scent. So you mix it, which is not sharp, and it's also not very fruity. We, it, it's a really nice blend together. So this one I recommend wearing on wet days when it's raining it's glorious do not wear this when it's dry and hot because you won't smell anything so i almost like gave this away because i thought it was terrible when i first smelled it in the summer but in this during the rainy season this smells like your body like you went through a field of apricot or osmanthus flowers and um jasmine it, it, at nighttime or something and it's nice and dewy and fresh it's not fresh as in sharp it's fresh as in uh skin clean skin scent fresh Tr give this a try i highly recommend this um, this is one of my go-to scents when i want to smell quiet and feminine and just you know s keep to myself kind of like but feel happy at the same time let's see Okay, now that we went from a, a nice uh, feminine, quiet scent, now I'll give you a beast mode scent called Halfetti. So Halfetti is for women, but a lot of males loves to wear this as well. And this is from one of my favorite houses. It's a lesser well-known house in America. It's from Lund uh, England, but it's uh, so, and it's pretty old. Uh, I think it's they, it has a uh, history start it started out as a barber shop I believe and they sold these uh, uh, colognes and everything like that that got famous so as you can see they have royal uh, these are the patronage uh, from the uh, royalty the Duke of Edinburgh which is the Queen's husband and then the Prince of Wales um, those are their insignias on here so that means that they they are the customers of this brand so that's pretty amazing um this one halfetti is one of their best-selling ones it's a hard-hitting really really rich really really long-lasting incense uh perfume it has i believe rose all sorts of spices it might have even a little bit of oud anyways if you're looking for a powerful nighttime scent men and women um, very rich very spicy very full uh, try this one it's all of these things but it's also elegant and nice and put together at the same time it does not smell bad to me at all and I have a very sensitive nose so this one is a winner you get a lot of bang for your bucks because you only need one one spray and that's that's gonna fill a room mm. on the incense note but much lighter and can probably be worn like you know in a san francisco summertime which is like 70 degrees not too humid is this one called shalnur um so basically this is from the uh etro etro is a very nice uh italian sort of luxury house that specializes in paisley fabrics and those old rich type of you know uh 
fabrics and coats and stuff like that you know like the quiet old rich people that have like paisley lining in their cashmere camel coats or something like that that's this house italian house so basically shal noor is like a lemony light incense so if you love incense but you hate the amber and all of the stuff give this a try this is much lighter um, and it's delightful to wear and quite feminine it's not too mask it's also mask good for men and women it's a little bit more refreshing um, and unusual for an incense scent so I thought I would just bring it up I love wearing this uh, in the summer and also in the winter too let's see let's bring something a little bit Oh, let's do a gourmand. How's that? Okay, so this one is one of my favorite houses. This is L'Artesan Parfumeur, um, and this is Traverse du Bosphore. So that means travels in the Bosphore. Um, basically, that area is like uh, Turkey. So this is like based, inspired by Turkish delight, and there's like a, a wonderful red apple note there's like I think saffron there's amber there's sugar and this is like a gourmand actually so um, you will have a lot of interesting notes in the beginning has a waxy type of texture um, Turkish delights have a waxy type of texture if you have never had one before go ahead and give it a try they come in all sorts of different flavors they're kind of like a jelly but a little waxy at the same time so th this smells like apple uh, Turkish delights and uh, smoke I believe and a little bit of uh, other things thrown together. This is quite remarkable. I, I really like it. Uh, if you want a little bit something sweet and unusual, but you don't want the average like teeny bopper scent with berries and vanilla and the same old notes, so give this a try. Um, this is unusual and frankly very cool. Let's see. Ah, okay. Let's give this a try. So another unusual one. Uh, is this one and I bought this bottle many many years ago so uh, it might be slightly uh, it might be under a slightly different name so this is black by Comme de Garçon. Comme de Garçon is another one of those avant-garde kind of uh, perfume houses that is very easily affordable um, I believe a lot of their things are under $100. I mean, it may be like 90 something dollars, but it's still under 100 bucks. And they have all sorts of unusual notes and, and, you know, unusual compositions. This one is no exception. So back when I bought this, black is actually inspired by, I think, the fireplace. So it'll be the smoky, um, coaly, uh, imperfect for the, you know, for walking in the rain, walking in the winter, you can smell, smell the fireplace and feel warm and cozy. Uh, this is good for both men and women. Uh, I think a lot of men really love this smell. So give this a, give this scent a try. It's not as terrible or scary as you think. Um, and you might discover that you like something new. Speaking of Come de Garcon, I have to mention it's not winter or fall without me wearing this. Okay, so this is Gisomir, which is from their special and renowned incense line. So basically, Gisomir is a beautiful, 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 like um, Indian incense smell. And one of the most wonderful combinations they have is a wonderful, powerful cinnamon and cardamom. So cinnamon and cardamom are, especially cardamom, are really well-known Indian incense, uh, you know, smells, and also in Indian, like, food smells, too. So if you, and also wonderful wood, this is, like, a really, really warm, very spicy, very woody. It's almost kind of contemplative. It feels like it's uh, cleansing you, like you're at a spa and it's cleansing you from the insides or something. That's what it gives to me. This winter burning wood spice feeling it makes you feel very cozy inside. Let's see. 
what else okay well let's keep it a little bit lighter so um for those that likes to smell very fresh and um like woodsy and ambery there's this uh cool perfume place called pf candle company in san francisco that has like um this bunch of candles and a bunch of natural uh, perfumes too. And these are wonderful and they're local and they're only, this one was only $48. This one is number 11, Amber and Moss. And it's exactly like what it smells like. It smells like California woods, Amber and Moss. Wonderful and fresh for the, you know, if you want to smell natural and fresh and you don't want to smell like you're sugary or dipped in perfume or whatever this is really wonderful and so are their candles too so it's only 48 bucks not gonna break the bank and it's really nice it's not that long lasting but you know what people that tend to be drawn to this type of scent they don't want to be lasting on them all all day you know what i mean they want to have the refresh me up and then three hours later maybe they'll spray it on again and you won't have to worry about it being like all built up on your skin you know and you'd have to go home and take a shower or something so if you have that uh, urge to to wear these type of perfumes during the winter and and fall go for this one let's see let's do something little feminine let's do this one okay so this one is one of my favorites all time but you know in the in the fall and in winter it it comes in handy when you want to get away from the really ambery and heavy and spicy perfumes you want a little break to your nose you want something a little bit more floral no and uh, less heavy this is it this is your iris prima so iris prima is also from the house of penhaligon and it's got a, it's so warm and cozy and powdery it has a scent of bergamot in the beginning which makes it like uh, refreshes it up like a bergamot is like a lemon citrus scent but more more elegant so basically iris prima is uh, has a suede note that's powdery so it's not leather but it's suede and it has um, iris in it so iris as you know it's like a warm soft powdery sweater to wear in in the winter so this is what this smells like um this is suede feeling patch that they they put on the label it's supposed to be um dedicated to i mean it's like uh inspired by the iris the prima ballerinas of the london ballet company so they they wear this pow they have this powdery scent for the makeup and then they break in the the toe shoes and whatnot and there's like a a smell of this like broken in suede which is really nice and soft and and comforting so if you're a lady or even a guy who likes this sweater cozy like type of thing to wear in the fall winter wear this one this is so nice okay all right um let's see so let's go back to something more heavy hitting uh this is david yerman's limited edition so basically let me see so this is a tester this is why this this is like a plastic cap that they put on here but it actually comes with a nice gold cap if it weren't a tester so i bought this um tester online because I was buying it blind and I didn't want to get something that, you know, might turn out bad at a really high, at the full retail price. So this one, if you like oud, and I, I usually don't, but this oud is really soft and feminine. Um, it, it might get take use, getting used to, but it has hints of raspberry, it has hints of rose, it has other florals to make it nice and airy. Um, all you have to do is, you know, is ride it out. Yeah, this is a really well composed and elegant rose oud fragrance that is not in your face. It's not aggressive. It's not masculine. It's very wearable. And it's also probably like a very good price. Like I bought this huge bottle for like 50 bucks or something. I mean, granted that was a few years ago, but don't, if you like rose and oud, but you don't like it too much, and it's not sweet, it's not any of these things. It's beautiful rose oud, but feminine and a delicate touch 
try this one. And it's also good for guys too. It's not too feminine. You know, guys and girls can wear the same scents, you know. Um, speaking of rich, oh, you know what? I will do this one. This one is beautiful. So this one is Bottega Veneta's uh, not uh, O Absolute. So anytime you see Absolute, it generally means like it's like a really thick per, uh, version of the original. So I have the original, the Knot, uh, Knot actually, um, and it's like a beautiful orange blossom Neroli scent uh, that is very good for everyday wear, uh, kind of on the serious, more like um, clean, serious side. But this, the Absolute, is wonderful for for like winter. Uh, especially if you like the note myrrh and myrrh smells kind of like to me like smoky coca-cola um yeah without the sugar so it's smoky coca-cola without the sugar and <laughs> orange blossom and us you know incense this is really fabulous and it's very strong all you need is one spray so if you like a churchy type of acts, uh, uh, incense that is a uh, has orange blossom in it to soften it up and and give it some uh uh some juiciness check this out check this out this is really nice and unique and i don't think it's that expensive i bought it on online so if you can get it uh, give it a try it's it's really wonderful and very concentrated too let's see ah oh, okay let's do something a little am unusual. Let's do this one. Okay, so this one is um, 2 a.m. Kiss by Derek Lamb. This is a 10 Crosby Street um, version. So it's an unusual kind of sculpture looking thing, but you take off this thing and it has a magnetic lid. So what I like about this is like it smells totally synthetic and strange, but in a good way. So basically this perfume smells to me like a little something a little bit fruity but you can't identify the fruit then you have something like cinnamony it's totally cinnamony then you have some salty marine musk note that is very unusual when you add this all together it makes like a very intriguing scent especially uh, when you're sweating and then you're in the winter so it has a cinnamon slightly fruity slightly salty musk note that's really clean and nice too so if you have any ch if you have a chance to try this 10 a.m kiss i mean 2 a.m kiss is really unusual and kind of cool um yeah i know this line was panned but whatever you know i only care about the smell so if you you know try a sample or something like that you might turn out to like it someday just because it's a little bit unusual Let's see. Oh, speaking of unusual, this one is really, really beautiful for winter. This one is Rhino um, by Zoologist, uh, Rhinoceros by Zoologist. So basically, Zoologist is aligned by Victor Wong in uh, Toronto. And basically, he makes um, perfume inspired by various animals. So Rhino, as you can tell, as you might think, is a big, strong scent, big and beastly scent. So it's like something that an English gentleman would wear whilst he's, um, d d you know, reading a book by his fireplace, sitting on a big leather chair, sipping some whiskey. Uh, and this is what he would probably smell like. And I love this because I think it's a masterpiece. The first spray is like whiskey. So it's like really boozy and kind of off-putting. But then you have peat, P-E-A-T, like what they put in whiskey, the smoky. You have the leather, you have lavender, you have, you know, all these herbaceous notes. And then you have this awesome leather and awesome amber and all these other notes that really makes it amazing. I mean, 
if you're going to get this, get this right now because there's a new version that's coming on for 2020 and there, this version, the older version might get sold out soon. So I was trying to get my hands on that, but it's been sold out in a lot of places. So I'm going to try my best to get like a full bottle of this, the original one, because it's that amazing. And I generally love almost everything from this line, even if it's controversial. And I know it's not very feminine smelling, but that's okay. This is one of the, this is one of the first smells, I mean, first fragrances that broke me of my hatred for leather scents. Once I liked this, then I started going and collecting leather scents. It's this good. It, it made me change my mind. Another zoologist, is this one that I got this year. Um, so this is B. As you can tell, it has a beautiful um, illustration of a bee, like a woman bee. She's like Queen Elizabeth wearing like her regalia and she's a queen bee. So basically this is like an amazing honey scent that won awards, I believe. Uh, it's not just honey, it's also pollen, which is kind of powdery. It kind of does make you want to sneeze, so be careful if you're like, you know, a sensitive to heavy flat floral or heavy honey, this might not be for you, but you should probably just smell it just to see what it's like. And it's pollen, honey, uh, wax, all these, and it's, it's basically like a bright summer day when you smell this. It's like royal jelly. It's really concentrated and really powerful and really like syrupy, you know, it's dense and waxy, but it's like really, really nice. I'm so glad to have it in my collection just because it's so unusual and there's nothing I have that smells anything even remotely like this. So kudos to Victor for creating this type of scent. I mean, the thing is, if you're gonna be a collector, you wanna go for stuff that may not be the easiest to wear, but it's still something that is so unique. Like, I will never forget the smell of this. You know what I mean? I'm, there might be a hundred other perfumes that you can't even remember what they smell like, but you will never forget this type of combination. And especially it's all put together so well. Uh, also, Victor is like an independent perfumer. So that is very, very unusual. It's very hard for individual perfumers to, to come up with their own lines because it's so expensive for the, the the smaller businesses. The big perfumers, they can buy in volume and get, they can drive the prices down for the, their ingredients. But the small people, because they're forced to, uh, to buy things in smaller volumes, they don't have, they can't leverage that type of, um, you know, uh, buying power. So it's good. I feel also good to support this uh, independent perfumers as well. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? Um, here's a, an unusual scent, also by Comme de Garcon. And this is one of my first and most favorite ones. So this is called Hinoki. Um, and this is in collaboration with the famous uh, British magazine called the Monocle. Uh, Monocle is like a very uh, hip and cultural and business related um, publication that comes out of London and uh, they have cafes and whatnot. And this is one of their first, this is their first scent called Hinoki. So if anyone's ever been to a Japanese spa, um, a lot of the spa, the wood itself is made out of this uh, Hinoki. So Hinoki, I believe is a, some type of cypress and it has like an amazing, slightly, it's like a turpentine, uh, lemony citrus smell that's added together that makes a really like citric wooden wood shavings type scent that is like really amazing and I know what it smells like too because I used to work at Restoration Hardware um, many many years ago and they had this one um, like bath thing where you open up a pouch and you throw these wood shavings 
uh, into the bath to scent it and it smelled just like this and that was also called Hinoki shavings so I know it smells just like it so this is quite nice and unusual if you like citric wood or sauna smell or something like that give this a try okay let's see okay this is Pythony. This is from the House of Penhaligans, which, as you know, I love. So this one is uh, smells like cardamom, sandalwood, um, cedar wood, spices, uh, cinnamon. So this is a spicy wooden scent with a slight uh, can like Indian candy smell. If you ever had like the Indian milk fudge or Indian candies, they like to condense milk until it turns into like a fudge. And then they put like pistachios and they put like cardamom in it to flavor it. That has that scent there. And then it ends in a spicy wooden scent. So this is wonderful for winter and fall because it's so warm and it's scented so nicely and so cozy. This is a scent that both men and women can wear as well, but it's, it's geared towards women, but it's, it's you know, Penhaligans, everything can be worn, you know, both ways. And I'm kind of running over, so you know what? I will, um, okay. Let me do this scent. This one is Fee on Aiguillas. So I think um, this is a, a pine scent. This is a sweet, sugary, uh, like a uh, sap, sweet sap and pi pine scent, pine sap, I think. So it's like a sugary, ambery pine scent, which is unusual for winter. Um, this is also by Serge Luton and quite unusual and nice to wear. Mm. These two, uh, Shergi and Volute are uh, tobacco scents. This has hay and a lot of iris and uh, amber and everything. This is one of my favorite Volute from Diptyque. Uh, the EDT is one of my favorite. Uh, you can get the e EDP now uh, from the stores, but you can't get the EDT anymore. So I'm glad I caught this because I prefer it lighter. And this is a wonderful hay, iris, amber scent that's like amazing. Um, give this a try if you can find it. Uh, they have the EDP. This one, Shergi, is a wonderful, a warm tobacco scent that has like l little spices and stuff like that. This is nice and smooth and warm. Okay, let's do my few last ones. Uh, for another rose scent, uh, rose incense scent with no oud, uh, try Jeroboam. This is a very unknown brand, but it's quite nice. Um, this is very powerful. So this is like um, an extra de parfum, which is like kind of like the perf like a highly concentrated uh, oils perfume has lemon, rose, and incense in it. So if you like Oriental rose, and it's nice and jammy too, try this. Give this a try. It's called Oriento. Last few ones. Um, let me do this. Uh, okay, so let me do this. I like Obsession by Calvin Klein, the original one for women, and I love it because it's like one of the most powerful ambers around. I feel like it's it ble it's very uh, skillfully blends um, amber, uh, orange peel, or mandarin peel, and leather, lavender, and all of these things together to make like a, a really, really masterpiece. Uh, thing. I only have it in the one ounce because I bought it for nostalgia's sake. I didn't like this when I was young, but it's, I still recognize a masterpiece when I see it. And my last ones, this one, it may not be the most obvious. Uh, isn't this beautiful? It's called Oranges Bigarad. So basically, um, this is like a, a warm, cozy tea scent with a benzoin um, dry down. So benzoin makes everything cozy and 
uh, warm. It's kind of like an ambery vanilla scent. Uh, that's what benzoin is, slightly smoky, slightly airy. So this is orange and green and, and dry black tea, which already kind of makes it like kind of wintry in fall. And then it ends on a nice like uh, rounded ambery note with a van sort of ambery vanilla smelling background. Okay, and my last one. This is uh, on, uh, from Fragonard, which is a famous French house, and they're not expensive. Uh, so this is Le Jardin de Fragonard, Ensemble Feve Tonka. So Tonka bean is a very, um, very popular note to wear during the winter. It makes everything smell very cozy and creamy and warm and kind of gourmet-ish type of smell. So basically, uh, you know how Dior has a perfume called Feve Delicieuse. So Feve Delicieuse is about tonka beans. So that's like a really rich, thick tonka bean type of a scent and it costs the earth. But if you, you know, if you don't have the money for it, maybe you can give this a try. This is rich and thick and has incense and tonka beans in it as well. And this is probably like much easier on your bank account. So this is called Ensence, which is incense, Fev Tonka. So Tonka bean, Fev means bean, Tonka is Tonka. So uh, incense, Tonka bean uh, by Fragonar. Um, thank you for watching. I'll have a, a list of all the perfumes that I talked about on the bottom so you can re either research it or buy it on your own. Thank you. Bye.